In this video, I want to clarify the set enterprise info icon and its relationship uh, to the UCCX desktop administration. So there are three key elements, and I will point them out. Let's assume that in our script, we have set a, a string variable called string CSQ. In our actual UCCX script, before we select our resource or actually connect to the resource, if we want to display information out at the agent's desktop, we have to define that information in three places. First here in the icon set enterprise call info. And if I do a right click on that, you'll see that um, under the expanded call variables, we have defined string CSQ, string call time, string queue time, and the string layout. These values are defined down in our actual script. The name that is pushed out to the agent at the desktop is these names here. How do we associate this with this? We do that through the settings expanded call variables. Expanded call variables, if you think about it, you have a desktop, you have this script running on the server, and you have uh, an agent, uh, uh, Cisco agent desktop. The Cisco agent desktop gets its information from the server. The server is getting its information from this script, which is also on the server, but um, the client-server relationship is established between the Cisco agent desktop software and the script through the set expanded call variable field. So these values here are set up in the server, and I'll take you there in a moment, but right now I just want you to see that what we did here was to uh, select a value, in this case string CSQ, which was defined in my script, and then I went here and selected a name. These names are defined here in my set expanded call variables, and this links up to the server in the following way. So let's just take one of these, string CSQ. First we're going to go over here to our administration tool. We're actually going to go on the right side here and go to Cisco Desktop Administrator. At that point, we find that there is a section called Enterprise Data, which consists of fields and layout lists. You also have your personnel. All of the agents defined in your system are listed here in personnel. So let me show you how this works together. First, we go to our fields. We uh, um, note that we have several fields that are predefined by Cisco. So ANI, for example, is a system variable. You can change the name of it, but it is assigned by Cisco. It's field index uh, 255. I would also point out that call variable number one through call variable number 10. If you were to change the name of those, um, you could, in effect, report these. The first 10 variables are reportable in the Cisco historical reports. So if you want to create a field, for example, where an agent might input some data and call this note field, if you picked uh, any one of these variables and change the name, you could port on that. It would show up in the historical uh, report section. So if we now say add a new, let us create something called, well, let me go back down here and match it up. We're going to have something called uh, queue name. So back, back here, I need to have something called queue name. And this is what's going to be displayed out to the agent. So whatever you type here, they'll display. These are 
this here logical name that relates to this logical name here and here through the get set enterprise info is uh, established here. And save it. Next thing we need to do is go here and create a layout. And in our layout, first we'll give the layout a name. Let's uh, let's call this uh, um, sales agents. <clears throat> and we go through here, and we select the various uh, information that we want uh, to display to that person. Now keep in mind this information has to be defined in your script and in the set enterprise variable in the script. So um, in this case just for discussion purposes I'll set the queue name. So go ahead and save that and we have saved it to sales agent. It was transaction successful. Next thing we need to do is go to personnel and find our agent. Let's say uh, this agent here. And what we're going to do is go over here and we're going to associate them with a workflow. And so in your um, desktop administration, you would have created a workflow. And uh, in this case, I, I haven't set one up yet at the desktop, but perhaps this person is a member of central scheduling. In that workflow, I will define what um, information is supposed to be sent to that agent's display. So at the end of the day, by way of review, we create a variable. We create an expedited call variable list this list must also be here and in here we do that in the fields we also do that by establishing a layout and we also um, go into our agents associate the agents with a workflow group and then at the desktop uh, administrator we uh, create that work group in the get uh, variables here this user dot layout is what determines what is pushed out to the agent who is defined in the uh, desktop uh, uh, workflow definition. So we have to specify here the layout. You can have many different layouts just as long as what you're what you're going to do here is you see here where I say user layout. Uh, I'll, I will have a layout called screen pop and that's th that in that screen pop or in the case of the example I just did you'll have the um, well let me go ahead and add it so we'll have uh, we'll have something here called screen pop and I'll add the queue name the uh, um, and a Dennis. And these are the elements that I want to push out to that uh, here. So uh, I hope this is uh, helpful to you, and I hope you have found it interesting.